Hello and welcome back. Now I'm sure we've got a lot of people out there right now that are very excited about jumping into the Houdini application and learning exactly what makes it tick. But before we do that, I thought it would be really nice if we first take a look at the history of the Houdini application as well as the company that develops, produces, and sells it, and that's Side Effect Software. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to take a trip down memory lane. All right, let's get started. For those of you that did not know, Side Effect Software was founded June 26, 1987. Wow, that's crazy. I was only six years old at the time. Six years old. Yeah. I was uh, I was 17. So um, I take it it wasn't fast cars and girlfriends for you. Uh, <laughs> not at six. I only had Transformers. They Transformers. turned into cars. So I mean, you got that. <laughs> so you kind of got that. You know what? Thinking about it, if our students are able to perform some very simple arithmetic, they can figure out exactly how old yeah. we are. Lovely. Of course, Side Effect Software had to come from somewhere. Let's take a look. Omnibus, way back in the day. Omnibus, and I believe it was 1982, hmm. establishes Omnibus Graphics. Omnibus Graphics begins work on a proprietary CG application, which became known as Prisms. Now, of course, they've got a bunch of different developers, but mm -hmm. two lead developers, Mr. Kim Davidson and Greg Hermanovic, end up playing a very important role in Side Effect Software, as we're about to see in just a second. So keep their names in mind. Now, Omnibus grew and grew, and, and they ended up buying CG companies in the United States, the two major key players at the time in the U.S., and um, basically acquired a lot of debt, mm -hmm. and what ended up happening was defaults on loans, etc. And well, bink, they close. Ah. Basically, 1987, they file bankruptcy. And Mr. Davidson and Hermanovic, two very smart individuals, quickly jump on and purchase the rights to the source code for Prisms, and they establish Side Effect Software. So there we go, 1987, Side Effect Software is born. And uh, Mr. Davidson and Hermanovic are now going to continue pursuing the development of Prisms as well as promoting and selling the application. Now, with Side Effect Software in, in place, uh, Prisms continues to be worked on, developed, and at the same time, uh, Mr. Davidson and Mr. Hermanovic are striving to provide content for the Toronto broadcast market. If you take a look at uh, all the productions that Mr. Davidson was involved in, it's very impressive. It was in the 80s and the 90s. He was involved in over 300 wow. different CG productions. I thought that was just – That's, that's mind-blowing. Really cool. So, of course, with uh, Prisms continuing to grow and develop in 1996, Houdini is introduced. And, of course, it's based on a lot of the Prisms technology. Now, in 1997, Hermanovic, Davidson, and two lead programmers were granted a Technical Achievement Award from the Academy of Arts and Sciences Motion Pictures for pioneering procedural modeling through Prisms for use in the film industry. And this wow. is a quote from SideEffects.com. So that's very cool. Procedural modeling. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of procedural workflow is something we're going to be focusing on heavily in the upcoming videos. Now, Houdini continued to develop. Version 4.0 became the first major 3D animation package to be released on Linux. The Linux release was announced at Seagraph in 1999. Now, June 5th, 2000, SideFX announced that Greg Hermanovic is going to be stepping down his position or from his position as CEO of SideFX Software to focus on a new business venture. Mr. Kim Davidson, president and COO, continued to run the company's daily operations. In August 2001, SideFX announced its plans to release a new product in the Houdini family, known as Houdini Select. Houdini Select comprised of the modeling, animation, texturing, and rendering aspects of Houdini, retailing for much less than the Houdini um, Master product. Basically, it was $1,999 mm -hmm. uh, USD, and Houdini Master was a little bit over $17,000 at the time. So it wasn't something that your local artist would run out and purchase. Right. Like nowadays, they, they can and go out and purchase, you know, these two, three thousand dollar applications. But now if you're just a modeler or animator or texture artist, you can go out and you can get Houdini Select. Well, at least at this time, it's announced that you'll be able to soon um, and for under two thousand dollars. So that's really cool. Also, Houdini Select, along with Houdini 5, went into beta in November of 2001. Now, in 2002, with version 5.5, SideFX introduced VOPS. 
providing a visual and interactive interface to the existing VEX scripting language and consisting of a library of over 250 pre-built nodes. Now, I know that a lot of the students that are viewing this video right now might be thinking to themselves, what is VOPS? Mm -hmm. What is VEX? I completely understand that you may not be familiar with these terms at this point, but as we progress through these different lessons, we will be introducing you to VOPS and VEX, and I encourage you to come back and watch this video again once you get a bit of an understanding as to how Houdini ticks and you start becoming comfortable with some of its vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find some of this interesting. So VOPS has been with us now since 2002. Now, June 11th, 2002, SideFX announced that 10-year Alias Wayfront veteran Mr. Robert McGee has joined the company to develop video, print, and interactive media training for the Houdini community. Robert McGee is an amazing guy. For those of you that get the opportunity to go to SeaGraph, you should stop by the SideFX software booth. Mm -hmm. Robert McGee is almost always available there giving presentations and talks. Great guy. He's been an excellent asset to the Houdini community with all the content he's been putting together. He's also on 3D Buzz all the time. Oh, that's cool. So if you have questions for him, you can reach him on our site as well. So moving right along at Seagraph 2002, Side Effects launched the Houdini Apprentice Program, providing access to all of the features of the commercial version, most of them, with a few small restrictions for the non commercial app. At the same time, they launched Houdini Escape and Houdini Halo. Houdini Escape was another product in the scalable Houdini line, providing modeling, texturing, animation, and rendering along with chops and vops. Houdini Halo provided a standalone compositing solution built on the node-based procedural architecture of the Houdini line. Now, Houdini Apprentice, in my opinion, was just such an amazing move for SideFX software. Here they are offering a free personal learning edition of the Houdini Master application. doesn't cost you a thing, and they don't pollute the interface with mm -hmm. watermarks and everything else. It's a very pleasant experience working with Houdini Apprentice. As a matter of fact, it's such a pleasant uh, experience that I have used Houdini Apprentice for all of the training videos that have been produced here at 3D Buzz. I see no reason to work with Houdini Master. Mm -hmm. Side effects, they've been awesome. They've actually offered a copy of Master to me, Houdini Master, to use in the production of these videos. But hey, I thank you guys, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need it because Houdini Apprentice does an amazing job of letting me showcase everything that I need to show. So I thought that was really nice. And um, it took a lot of time for other companies to pick up on hey, don't pollute the UI with so many watermarks. And to this day, not everyone has completely picked up on that. So you'll still find some of the personal learning additions of softwares yeah. out there that have some pretty crazy watermarks going so on. So is Houdini Apprentice the or origin of PLEs? Um, that's a good question. I'm trying to remember when the Maya PLE came out. They, they were both right around, around the same time. Around the same time. I honestly don't remember. Mm. Um but the PLE may have – actually, I'm pretty sure the Maya PLE mm -hmm. was already available. Gotcha. Um, and then, of course, here comes Houdini Apprentice with a, a very clean UI. Now, yeah. if I'm wrong, my apologies. I don't think that's critical <laughs> to anyone's learning here. But they're around the same time. All right, so moving right along, in December 2002, SideFX launched the Apprentice Challenge, motivating people to learn the software. In the press release, they cite 3D Buzz for their free Houdini course available at the time. So here we are, 2008. So it's just over five years yeah. ago that we had the first Houdini online course. Wow, it's amazing how fast time flies by. This time around, I'm looking forward to this course blowing that old course out of the water. Now, in 2003, five of the seven movies trying for nomination in the Achievement in Visual Effects Oscar category used Houdini extensively, affirming Houdini's stand in the visual effects industry. The films were Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Men in Black 2, Minority Report, Spider-Man, and Triple X. That's awesome. Now, SideFX announces the pre-release availability of Houdini 6 with the Apprentice program in March 2003, again citing 3D Buzz for providing free training material over Houdini. Now, Houdini 6 is officially released in May of 2003, introducing the new digital asset feature, amongst other improvements. Now, this Digital asset feature is something that's going to become very important to everyone here that's learning Houdini, and we're going to be focusing quite a bit on the creation of digital assets as we progress through this course. So just kind of keep that term in mind because it will become very important. 
Now, Houdini 7 is released in September 2004, marking the, for, the formal launch of Houdini Escape. Also released alongside Houdini 7 was a new render farm product called RScript. The Houdini Developers Kit, the HDK, was also made freely available with all Houdini Workstation products. Now, it was in January 2005 that 20-year veteran of the film industry, Mr. Craig Zeroni, uh, joined Side Effects as their production consultant. Uh, Craig Zeroni is an awesome individual. He's extremely talented, and <laughs> he's very funny. Uh, 3D Buzz interviewed him a couple years back for Buzz TV, mm-hmm. and wow, it was challenging to get through <laughs> the interview because he was just so funny, but he's an amazing individual, and if those of you out there watching this video get a chance to meet him, excellent, great guy. In October 2005, version 8 of Houdini is released, introducing a new integrated dynamics environment for Houdini Master, which is, of course, retailing at $17,000. And this is where rigid body, cloth, and wire dynamic simulations can now talk with one another. Now... Side effects dropped the price of Houdini Master drastically in March of 2007 to $7,995 for a node-locked license and $9,995 for a floating network license. They also combined Houdini's general pipeline products, RScript and Houdini Non-Graphical, into a single product named Houdini Batch. Now we're getting up more towards modern times here. Mm -hmm. The Houdini, uh, excuse me, the uh, public beta of Houdini 9 debuted July 2007. Houdini 9 has a completely reworked user interface, making Houdini easier to learn than ever before. Amongst other improvements, fluids have been added to the integrated dynamics environment, and a Python-oriented API was included. September 20th, 2007. Side effects announces the release of Houdini 9. On December the 11th of 2007, SideFX announces that Houdini 9.1 release candidate is available for public download. So here they are once again, SideFX offering a free public beta mm-hmm. of the application. I love when they do this. It allows people to get in there and start playing with all of the new features before the application is finished. They do this often and I love when they do it. Finally, January 22nd, 2008, 3D Buzz officially kicks off the new Houdini online classroom with the release of the first course video. Rocking. And so here we are, January 23rd, 2008, <laughs> wrapping up the history of Houdini and side effects software. So I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to go through this mm-hmm. video. I think it's a really cool uh, piece of past history, how side effects came from Omnibus graphic, uh, graphics way back in the day, all the way up to where they are today here in 2008. So with that, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.